right? So I'm excited to be a part of, you remember when I had Michael Coker on my show? So let's do it, let's do it, let's just make it fun. And I'm hoping that those who are listening uh, will definitely tap in and not only tap in into hearing it, but tap in into moving forward in their destiny, whatever that is. You know, find, my, my new thing is now, find your happy place. Because right now, there's so much confusion, there's so much sadness, there's so much depression. You, as an individual, you have a choice. You know, it's like searching. Find your happy place, and I promise you, you stamp it, and this is where you'll always end up whenever you feel like you're sad or whatever. Just stamp it, this is my happy place. I'm stopped, all right. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> like, this is how Michael is. And, and you know, I've only known him since June. And right? during the pandemic, it was like the most difficult time. And you see this person popping into Zoom and he's all jolly and like, what is going on with this guy, you know? Right. So, and, so I and have I think, to <laughs> go ahead. Sorry, so I have to, you know, excuse my appearance, but I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? I, time was getting ahead of me. And I'm like, you know what? I need to work out, right? I need to work out. And I'm like, you know what? I can cancel this workout just to get all dolled up for Michelle, but Michelle don't care about how I look. She wants me, you know, I'm like, you know what, this will be a true testament of doing what you gotta do, just get it done. So I just came back from a nice workout and I made it in time to be a part of this coffee talk. I was, yeah, I was get getting coffee. really nervous. I had to text him. I said, well, did you, <laughs> do you need the link? <laughs> I was supposed to have a cup of coffee, but you know, next time. So I think you brought up a good point, that happy place, right? So when we look at the happy place, a lot of us think, oh, this is paradise and it's, it's a place where we don't, we're worry-free and there is no drama, there's no pain, there's no suffering anymore. And what, you know, you're a perfect living example of how do you get to the uh, happy place and when you are in that happy place, you may look like crap today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So for me, the happy place is definitely a mindset right? It's definitely a mindset. And sometimes it's a landmark, right? Um, I made sure, you know, as I get to that landmark, I have to level set my expectations and that helps me stay in my happy place. So it's sad because some people say I'm a harder, you know, my heart is so cold, but that's not the case. You know, I do not want to have a heartbreak, right? I don't want to have a moment where I'm in that depressed state because I put so much confidence in the resources around me, right? So if I level set my expectations to say, hey, you're going to do this or get to a place where, guess what? This is going to stress me out. X, 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 no more stress, you know, because I need to be in my happy place, you know, and it's not, and let's be honest, happy place is not going to be a 24 hour, seven day a week thing, you know, but I try to make it, you know, I try to make it a 24 hour, seven day thing. And if it means you know, making sure you're around other people who are a part of your happy place. And the moment, the moment that they are tapping into your happy place, get rid of them. That sounds so harsh, but you have to. So, so we keep talking about this happy place. Tell us how you got there. I'm sure, yeah. sure before it wasn't like this, you know, you didn't have that happy place because now you recognize that happy place. So tell, it, tell us a little bit about how you got to the happy place. What was it before the happy place? So my, and we learned this in uh, our, our speakers course, right, where you have to do the origin, you know, the story of origin, wondering why, how did you get to this place? Um, I wasn't always a happy person, right? I've always been the quiet guy. Can you believe it? I've always been the guy that was, uh, you know, not really into the social crowds, but when necessary, I will speak up. Um, how did I get there? Especially, I'm a man of faith, so my, my faith keeps me grounded right? Um, knowing how to have those quiet moments, talking to him. And honestly, sometimes we forget that he is in front of us, you know, and that causes us to be distracted and get depressed and be distressed, right? So for one, it's keeping him in front. That's one. But um, it's been many years. I've gone through failures, you know, in college. I've gone through failures in high school. I've gone through failures in relationships. I've gone through failures with just me, so the first step to me getting into and maintaining a happy place is knowing me. I have to get to know myself. Who is Michael Coker? What makes Michael Coker happy? You know, and then I begin to get rid of the opinions of people because I used to relay or rely on them on, you know, I hope they validate me. I hope they think I'm happy. I hope they think this. I hope they think I'm worthy or have value. I had to get rid of that because once I have a relationship with myself, I don't need anybody else to tell me, you know, how great I am and how happy I should be. 
that's number one. So it took a matter of, I, I want to say, honestly, 10 years, about 10 years ago, it took me to get to this awesome place where it's a happy Monday, it's a happy Tuesday, it's a happy Wednesday. And words, words have power. Words have power. They're driven. They go out. So you have to begin to use the mouth. Your mouth is, a, is, is it kills and it gives life, right? That tongue, that tongue is deadly. Um, so make sure that your tongue speaks happiness into your place. I don't know if I answered your question, but uh, they, they I, talk about you know, the de devil's tongue because the devil yes. is to your, to your speaking. And a lot of time, you know, you have to be more conscious about what you're speaking, right? Are you speaking the, the, the tongue of evil or are you speaking the tongue of good? Um, so right. I love what you said about speaking and having a voice. And I, you did answer my question, but you know, I, I always look at life as a story and each, each, chapter of our our journey our life you know it, it, there's a story behind everything so if you were to look back um in your life what was your your story yeah Ooh, are you really ready for that no <laughs> i'm ready I, for it but i don't know if the audience are ready for it i hope they're, I they're wrapping their strong coffee i hope you guys need <laughs> strong coffee today so I'll, I'll give you the condensed version um i grew up in harlem i grew up in harlem um i remember the time I give it up to my mom I don't know how she uh made us the the person or the people that we are now but I was very impoverished right I didn't have much I remember the sugar water I remember the cereal uh, drinking um you know having cereal with sugar water I, I remember those days I remember us you know asking folks for cash so we could get to church I remember walking to church which was about a good three and a half miles just to get to church. Um, I remember my mom going through or in an abusive relationship with my father. Uh, I remember her scared, you know, this is me. So living as a child is like, okay, what's next? You know, I don't want to be, you know, I never want to be in a predicament where I'm like this, but as a child, you don't think about your future. You're in the now, you're just living and you just know that your mother loves you, right? My mother, um, ha I have a sister who is handicapped and my mom puts her 110% into my sister. But even then, she always gave us an equal amount of love, right? So I, I, I give her um, so many kudos. But even after that, I've always didn't know my value, right? So going through, I knew I was smart. You know, there was an intellectually gifted class, always made that, right, in elementary school. Uh, and then I went on to uh, high school for you know, this special high school called Frederick Douglass Academy. No one could get into that, but I did. But then I dropped out of high school because of a issue that I had, uh, a medical issue, and I just didn't go to school. And my mom was very persistent. She didn't listen to me, right? And it was a good thing. She didn't listen to me because I'm like, Mom, I want to go to another school. I need to go to another school. But she's like, no, you're going to go to the school because I want you to go to college. She was all for education. And I it became an age, I'm like, I'm not doing it anymore. Um, so I took, um, I went and got my GED, of course, but that stuck with me because now I've been tagged as a failure, right? I've been tagged as a high school dropout. You're around all of these folks because thank God I got a job, got a good job, all that great stuff uh, because of the experience. But while I'm working, you know, that's still tagged in my head, right? That you are a high school dropout. You never went to college. You didn't complete your college degree. Um, yet you're around all of these folks who talk about their college experiences that could damper your happiness, right? Because, you know, you don't have that story to tell. Um, then is when I realized, I'm like, this is my story. You know, this is my story. I, you know, I took the GD for the first time it passed. That's a story in itself, one. Uh, two, I'm working around uh, degrees, you know, folks who have degrees or at college educated folks. That's another story, you know. I've never been um, rejected because I failed high school. Never, you know, any opportunity that I, that I applied for, I got it because I put my 100% and the proof was on my resume that I've worked, that I had the experience. But still, the tag was there that I was a high school dropout. So what I did, I've always, you know, I, I did the college thing, but I never completed that. So now what, I'm a college fallout, right? Um, so two years ago, I said, you know what, I'm gonna make up in my mind, you know, to complete my degree because I don't wanna be tagged not only as a high school dropout, nor do I want to be tagged as a college dropout. So I completed my degree first generation, woohoo, two years woo ago. And it was amazing. It was amazing, not because of, because it wasn't even because of the going back to school experiences. Now I removed the tag of being a failure. 
And this is just me. I had to find my happy place, removing the tag of being a failure. So now, I, ever since then, I've been challenging myself that if I put my hand to it, I'm going to complete it because there's no failure. Failure is not an option in Michael Coker's life, you know? And if I'm going to, and I don't want to say fail, but if I'm going to fall because we fall down, but we get up, that's what happens in walking. Yeah. A child is not, can't walk because they fail several times. So if I'm going to fall and my, my, my coach, Dr. Josh, shout out to her, she says, fall forward. You know, <laughs> if you're going to fall, don't fall backwards, fall forward. At least I'm moving, you know, I'm moving. And that's the point. So I had to trust myself. I had to put out and out. I had, to, I just had to do it. But also the key here is being around folks who held me accountable because there are many times I'm like, I don't want to go back to school. Even now they're telling me to get my master's. I don't, uh, no, I don't want to, you know, but if I, if I enroll, I'm going to finish it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that helped, but that's my story. You know, I am a, a, a son of an awesome mother. My father is still alive. Gratefully. I've forgiven him. So that's another thing I had to forgive him because I grew up without a father. Yeah. But yet I forgave him and that healed me. That kept me in my happy place as well because I can still look at him and love him. I send him messages every now and again, love you, dad, happy birthday, whatever. Uh, but forgiveness is the key. Forgive, I had to forgive me too, you know? I had to forgive myself for doubting me, you know? I'm talking too much, I'm sorry. No, 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 this is about <laughs> you. I wanna hear your story. I don't, <laughs> this is great stuff, man. Um, I love the part where you said about the tagging, you know, because we all go through life and we all have, get tagged. No matter where you go to, you know, people look at you and they think of you as a tag, right? Are you a doctor? Are you a, you know, a smart person who graduated with the with the highest degree? Are you? Do you have a good job? Do you drive a good car? There's all kinds of tag that people are attaching attaching to us, and it, it's an invisible tag. And yeah. what, I, what I also heard was that you weren't really trying to prove to anybody that, you know, you're smarter than they, they are, you're, you're better than they are. You were really just proving to yourself that if I want to, I am capable of removing these tags, if I want to. And, you know, yeah. going, pursuing a master's degree, it's not something that you want to right, right now right. at this point in your life. So, so be it. Right. right. And, and right. I, I heard so much of that resilience and that, that mindset behind how not to give up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing you say that because it goes back to even my workout. Right. Um, I wanted to, and it, it, we had those days, right. Last week, I didn't really work out. I, I try to, and here's the thing. When we set goals, it has to be realistic, right? So I don't do five days a week, you know, six days a week of work it out because honestly, it's probably not going to happen. And guess what happens? When it doesn't happen, I'm disappointed. I've let myself down, you know, I, whatever. So I make sure that I do three times a week. But last week, it's just been hard. I've been just out of it, right? And I'll be honest, and I believe in transparency. I didn't work out last week. So this week, I, you know, it's Wednesday. I tried to do it yesterday. It didn't happen. I'm like, oh man, something came up because, you know, yesterday we had the call and today I'm having you. And I'm like, you know what? I need to do it. But that's the goal. Set measurable goals that you can actually hit and attain. Attainable. You know, make sure it's attainable. So I, even in my eating, I decided to go through a My Me Challenge, right? And I talk about this often. My My Me Challenge was fixing me. So I joined boxing. Um, I don't know how to, well, back then, six months ago, I didn't know how to swim. Now I know how to swim across the pool, right? <laughs> All my way to my Phelps, right? Not drown. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm learning how to float. I'm learning how to uh, tread water, all that great stuff. Um, but that's some of the things. I'm putting it on my vision board on the things I need to do. So I want to learn how to, I've learned how to swim. Now the next thing, I'm looking at my bike now. I have a bike over here in the corner that I... Don't laugh at me. You know, I'm trying to put training wheels on because I want to learn how to ride a bike, right? <laughs> oh, man, I want to see you on the training wheel. <laughs> you paddling down the stream, man. <laughs> you don't understand. And, and that's the thing, too. I'm not embarrassed because it's for me. This is my story. I need to accomplish this bike. I need to learn how to bike. So I, I look like a fool riding this bike. It's me. I, it's a fool to you, but not a fool to me. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I think that's the key. People look at and worry about the assumptions and opinions of other people. Oh, I'm going to look this way if I do this. Oh, I'm going to look that way if I do that. No, who cares about them? Who cares about them? It's about me. I have a journey. So my mommy journey also attached with my meeting. My meeting. Oh, my God, my meals. My I haven't had 
meet. I haven't had meat in uh, uh, since January, since January 13th. So I'm a pesky. Yep, I'm a pescatarian. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And honestly, it's a mindset. I do not miss chicken. I do not miss ribs. I do not miss beef. Uh, I don't miss any of that stuff uh, because there are so many things you can add to your diet. But anyway, um, you're, 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 you said something that triggered that was be, set yourself accountable. Just that simple. Don't look at other people. Forget about the opinions of people. Uh, only the, the only ones, the only opinions that matter are the ones that, well, that matters <laughs> pretty much. It's you, right? You, you, yeah, your own exactly. opinion about yourself matters. And, and hopefully you learn to use positive opinion about yourself, right? More, more self-affirmation and self-motivation rather than, you know, putting yourself down and stepping on yourself all the time and trip over yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One thing I've noticed on your, on your Facebook, and, and I've been following Coker, uh, I call him Coker. <laughs> I've been following him for uh, since June, and you see all these feet about how he's working out, and he's very consistent. And, and you you can tell from a person who's doing the talk versus a person walking the talk. And Michael is someone who's walking the talk. You know, there's a lot of us who talk about you know having that positive mindset, feeling positive, be positive. We we keep talking about it, but very. It, it's rare to come across someone who's actually doing it and you see them struggle, you see them not at their best at times, but they're still doing it. Yes, yeah, so yeah. One of the yeah. things that you, now, now you are the founder of Own Your Dream and I think this really ties back very well together, Owning Your Dream. What, yes. what, is, what does Owning Your Dream means to you? Yeah, so it started, um, I, I love talking to high school students and I love talking to college students, right? Because I remember when I, as we've mentioned um, in high school, I had that dream. I had the dream of being a doctor. Can you imagine? I wanted to be a doctor and then that kind of changed because my grandmother was a registered nurse and then my Nana was a um, uh, respiratory therapist. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be a doctor, you know, let me keep it in the family. Um, but then, you know, after, you know, the college, I mean, the high school dropout, that kind of changed because again, that tag was with me. I'm like, okay, have you ever seen a doctor who was a high school dropout, you know? Um, back then I didn't know. Um, I then changed my life and uh, went to DeVry, right? Um, to be a systems analyst. And how did I pick that, that, that job? Was that I had a book of job descriptions and the office. So I was reading through, I'm like, ooh, it says it has a quarter office and they're gonna make $55,000 a year. I'm like, ooh, this is what I want. I thought it's gonna be a systems <laughs> analyst, right? I uh, didn't know that that entailed uh, programming and I don't like programming, you know? <laughs> so I took the C, and I got the C, I took the C++ and I got the F. And I'm like, this is not for me, you know, this is not for me. But my point is, as I talk to these college students and these high school students, they have a dream, right? And my purpose of uh, my business is to tell folks that dream that you have, own it. I had a workshop with a couple of young folks and I had them stand up, right? And I think they were a part of, not the millennials, I don't really, I get them, uh, the generators confused, but they were between the ages of six and like 15. I had them stand up and I had them close their eyes. And I said, I need you just to dream. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Where do you see yourself 15 years from now? Where do you see yourself two years from now? And the sad part, they couldn't answer that question. They couldn't answer it. So I'm like, oh my God, now how do you allow these eight-year-olds, these 12-year-olds, these 18-year-olds to dream again? How do you make them dream again? And when they dream, own it, own it live it. So that's where this came from. So it's owning your dream, only not only to the high school and the college student, but what happens if you have someone who had 15 years of experience doing uh, customer care, and I want to become, you know, I want to go into operations. Own that dream. Uh, let me help you. I'll do the resume. I'll help you get through your interview. I'll help you, you know, do the job search, whatever you need to own that dream, you know, come to own your dream consulting and we'll help you. Mm. And even with the speaking, like I never thought that I, I never tagged myself as a motivational speaker. Can you believe it? Until, until a year ago. So now that's the part of my life.
that's my dream that I'm owning. You're, okay? you're pretty damn good about it. You know, you're a pretty damn oh. good uh, speaker. Thank you. Thank you. You are as well. I can't wait. So, so two things. Um, number one, the smartest people that I know are high school dropouts. Just, just a fact. It's just a fact. Yeah. You know, I look around all my friends um, who are really successful in doing business, in doing, you know, being well-rounded in all aspects in their life. They're high school dropouts. And, and I think it speaks a lot about the dreams that we have. Um, I think a lot, of, a lot of us, you know, we go through an education system that, that is shaped and that is structured to tell you to dream in only certain ways, right? Yeah. Only dream to become a doctor, only dream to become a lawyer, only dream to become someone who's making a lot of money and this is where your happy place would be. Right. But, you go through life and like you and I go through life, we realize that that's not it. That's not our dream. That's someone else's dream, not my dream. I never wanted to be a lawyer for that matter, right? And, and right. so it comes to the point where you start realizing that you have your own dream. Yes. And I love yeah. how you start early with these high school kids. Yeah, yeah. They got to identify it then. Don't yeah. wait until you're years old even though that's not a problem you know but don't wait so late you know you have so much time and I I, I take this saying for to, to, to heart there's a oh are you there yeah I'm here okay. yeah I'm giving him his, him his kudos Chris Allen and it says you got to live like you're dying and I love that song and and that's my uh, mantra for right now is live like you're dying what will you do if tomorrow was your last day, or if today was your last day, or if you had seven days to live, because tomorrow's not really promised to us. Right. Sorry, that was like a real sensitive moment here. <laughs> no, I think that's, that's beautiful, and that's something that really resonated with me this morning, so because that idea of what if I die tomorrow, what, what do I want to do, right, and I, I think we go, we keep putting off things, you know, to the, I'm going to do tomorrow, I'm going to do my laundry. What if you get, don't get to your laundry tomorrow? Yeah, what have you accomplished? What legacy have you left for someone else? But like even, and, and to those who are not entrepreneurs, I'm not knocking you because everybody can't be an entrepreneur, right? But you can be a leader in your own field, right? You could be a leader in your work. I don't care if you are a cashier at Wendy's, you be the best cashier in that space, right? So my point there is come to work, give you 100% because somebody's, I tell everyone, you know, you're being interviewed every day. And most folks forget that, and then they wait until it's time for an opportunity, then they apply, and then they don't get it because your leadership is watching you, and they've already been watching you, and now it's like, now you want the job, but you weren't acting like the job, right? So I, I tell folks, look the part, be the part, act the part. And I got that from, I don't know if she's watching, Caroline McGrath. She was my first man, uh, manager. She got, I took that from her, so I coined that. But I, I try to not only address, because everybody's talking about entrepreneur, own your dream, own your business. What happens if you don't want to, you know? Yeah. There's, there's, there's a business in you, right, that you can give to somebody else. And whether that's to Wendy's, whether that's to, you know, your Fortune 50 company. And I've learned that working at these companies. I come in giving my 1,000. Ooh, so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to uh, kind of wrap up. A little bit. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to kind of wrap, wrap up today's interview a little bit. And so if you were to summarize everything that we had talked about and give the audience one main walkaway message, what would that walkaway be? Hmm. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to find your better self. That's deep, man. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a lot of challenge that we see nowadays, yeah. right? There's a fitness challenge. There's inspirational challenge. There's positivity challenge. There's real life challenge. All these that's, challenge. That self means, you know, you getting to know yourself. So that's challenging it. You're better. So to find my better self, I have to know, you know, I have to know me to get to that better space, that better place. And of course, as we've been saying, find your happy place and stay there, you know? And, oh, and look at the kitty. That was my kitty. My kitty, um, you know, really loved, loved the motivational happy part. Place. 
That's your happy place, happy place. too. <laughs> <laughs> he was really inspired by the happy place. Where can people find you, Michael? Sure, sure. So I can be reached info at on your dream, uh, Inc. at um, I'm sorry, info at onyourdream.com. But all social media just call me Coker. Just call me Coker. And there's a reason for that. I realize, and this is going to be funny, and I'm going to wrap this up. But I call myself Coker because there's so many Michaels out there, right? There's Michael this, there's Michael that. And then when you're talking to somebody, you're like, you know, Michael, and then they start going, Michael, yeah, 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 Michael. No. But when you say Coker, Hey, Coker, I know Coker, you know, Coker, yeah, that's Coker, you know, so everybody knows Coker. So that's why I say just call me Coker because it's unique and it's finding my unique self. Yeah. So ever since I met Michael, I've been calling him, it's Coker. It's Coker. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's a punchline, you know, punch, someone just punching you in the face. Don't call me Michael. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, hey, you've been amazing, yeah. man. You've been amazing. You've been amazing. I'm excited. Finally, I'm, I'm finally. amazing for you. I, like, I, I'm so inspired by what you're doing. And I see so many things that's on your Facebook feed, you know, just keep it up. You inspires me to the 100 degree. Oh, you thank you. Ooh, impact, impact, impact. Yeah. And, and he lost so much weight. Like he popping into the Zoom one day. And I was like, whoa, is that my is that Michael? <laughs> and he yes. did it within like 30 days. It's amazing. <laughs> I I still need to keep you in my back pocket because mm. there are there are some days it's like, is it back? <laughs> no, but you're good. Thanks, Michelle. Oh, thank you so much for coming to the show. Oh, thank you, everyone, for joining in and watching this live for Coffee Talk Live show. This is where I bring you love, courage, and connection. Hopefully, you are not only getting love from It's Coker, you're also getting a lot of inspiration courage, ideas to move forward. And remember, when you fall, fall forward, not backwards. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. And make sure you tune in to Michelle. She's doing great things, you oh. know? Follow her, make her great. We're gonna make you great, Michelle. Thank you, we're gonna make each other great. Yes, see yes, you, yes, yes. See you in Colombia. There you go, right, I can't wait. Yeah, right, so bye. excited. You owe, me, you owe me a drink, by the way. <laughs> no, you know it. You know it. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.